Good night today let's talk about the last title conquest of Everton Fuchibo Klube. Context of conquest. Before delving into history, it's good to point out that the club was one of the founders of the Premier League, but it struggled a lot in the early 1990s to find a good coach. The result is that this team was no longer as powerful as the one that made history at the end of the 1980s. So much so that in the 1993-1994 season Everton was only two points above Sheffield United, the first team in the relegation zone. Context of Conquest Before delving into history, it's good to point out that the club was one of the founders of the Premier League, but it struggled a lot in the early 1990s to find a good coach. The result is that this team was no longer as powerful as the one that made history at the end of the 1980s. So much so that in the 1993-1994 season Everton was only two points above Sheffield United, the first team in the relegation zone. Everton's title campaign. From the change in command, the team improved on the field. Nothing brilliant, but it would be enough to see the team finish the season in the elite of English football. However, at the same time as struggling to remain in the top flight, Everton were also playing in the FA Cup. And it was there, in the FA Cup, that the team decided to spend the ball. Everton entered the field in the 1994-1995 FA Cup for the first time on January 7, 1995, against Derby County, in a match valid for the third phase. In front of just over 29,000 fans, Joe Royal's charges suffered a little more than necessary, but Andy Hinchcliffe scored the goal, the only one in the game, that secured the toffs in the fourth phase of the competition. Next, the opponent was Bristol City. While in the previous phase the Everton team had played in front of their fans, in this one the confrontation would be in a rival field. Easy game? Nothing. Another balanced match, but again with the Liverpool team being lethal, and the hero of the time was defender Matt Jackson. Thus, another 1-0 victory and the Toffees advanced to the round of 16. If in the two previous phases the team saved a lot on goals, this time they had no mercy against Norwich. Playing at Goodison Park, Everton applied a resounding 5-0 to dispatch their rivals, without any hardship. The curious thing is that the five goals were scored by different players, that is, the match ended with five top scorers. One of them, remember that name well, was Paul Rideout. In the semi-final, the Toffees' opponent was Tottenham. Interestingly, the London team had been banned from the FA Cup at the beginning of the season due to financial problems, but managed to be readmitted after making an appeal and this being accepted. That said, Everton didn't give Spurs the slightest chance. The match was held at a neutral venue, at Ellen Road, in front of more than 38,000 fans. In the first stage, Jackson put Everton in advantage. At 10 minutes of the second half, Stewart extended the scoring. From the penalty spot, Gascoigne even reduced for Tottenham, the only goal conceded by the Toffs in the title campaign. But Amukachi would still score two more goals, giving the game final numbers, Tottenham 1 times 4 Everton and so Everton reached the FA Cup final, to everyone's surprise. On the other hand, on the other side, a very tough opponent, none other than Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United. And despite the technical inferiority in relation to the Red Devils, the Toffs had already shown enough quality to, in 90 perfect minutes, achieve the improbable. Good night today let's talk about the last title conquest of Everton Fuchibo Klube. Manchester United was starting to take off and become the winning machine that we know today. For context, the Red Devils had finished the previous six seasons with at least one major title. In the 1994-1995 season, in addition to the FA Cup, the club was also fighting for the Premier League title. On the other hand, Everton came from a fast that had lasted eight years. During this period, as already mentioned, the club faced problems in finding the right coach, as well as a lot of difficulty in reinventing itself after the great phase in the 1980s. Thus, on the field, two traditional shirts that arrived, each one way, in an accredited way for the final. The match was scheduled for May 20, 1995. And the venue could not be any other, Wembley. Almost 80, 000 fans filled the giant stadium to witness the grand finale. But first, a brief consideration needs to be made. In the semi-final, Manchester United needed a replay against the very weak Crystal Palace, which at the end of the season would be relegated to the English second division. At 3pm, London time, Gerald Ashby whistled the start of the game. If Everton lacked big stars in its squad, United had Peter Schmeichel, Gary Neville, Roy Keane, and Mark Hughes. Already on the bench of the Red Devils, names like Ryan Giggs and Paul Scholes who, at that time, were still young promises. In this scenario, Joe Royal knew that he would not be able to play on equal terms with such a qualified team. Thus, defending itself intelligently, Everton managed, as far as possible, to annul Manchester United. 
And, 30 minutes into the first half, Paul Rideout took the chance he had and put Everton ahead. It was all the Toffees needed in the match. From then on, the one who took responsibility and was sovereign on the field was the defender and team captain Dave Watson. With a practically impeccable performance, Watson managed to stop the strong attacks of the Red Devils. Giggs and Scholes even entered, but they couldn't do anything. And then Gerald Ashby pointed down the centre of the field. To the surprise of many, Toffs were five times FA Cup champions. The cast of that Everton title in the FA Cup became known as Dogs of War, War Dogs, in a free translation, and eternalised in the history of the Toffs. Even because, after that, the club would only return to a tournament final in the 2008-2009 season, when runner-up. In the Premier League, fourth place in 2004-2005 was the furthest the club got. Thus, it's been 25 long years of fasting that bothers Liverpool's blue side. Now, however, for the first time in many seasons, Everton are showing real signs that they can promise strong emotions. Will Carlo Ancelotti be able to end this taboo of two and a half decades and win a title with Everton? Manchester United was starting to take off and become the winning machine that we know today. For context, the Red Devils had finished the previous six seasons with at least one major title. In the 1994-1995 season, in addition to the FA Cup, the club was also fighting for the Premier League title. On the other hand, Everton came from a fast that had lasted eight years. During this period, as already mentioned, the club faced problems in finding the right coach, as well as a lot of difficulty in reinventing itself after the great phase in the 1980s. Thus, on the field, two traditional shirts that arrived, each one way, in an accredited way for the final. If you like the video, don't stay out, subscribe to the channel, activate the bell and leave your like. See you next time Everton News.